Hello. Hello. Okay. So, all right, if you're ready, we can start. Sure. Hello, dear viewers. Today, my guest is an incredible Georgian and Ukrainian politician, Hatia Dekanoidze. Hello, Hatia. Hello, how are you? I'm okay, and you? Thank you very much. More than 700 days have passed since the beginning of Russia's aggression against Ukraine. What do you assume about this? Well, I mean, first of all, this is very painful uh, because, uh, I mean, observing uh, what you're going through and what Ukrainians are going through after this barbaric uh, terrorist act uh, by Russia, uh, killing civilians, uh, killing and uh, deporting children, uh, Ukrainian children, uh, occupying territories, shuttling just the civilians, hospital, kindergartens. I mean, this is uh, this is a trail of Russia. This is how this terrorist uh, Kremlin always acts. And probably you are aware that in 2008, uh, Georgia also, uh, the 20% of Georgian territories also has been occupied by Russia. And 2008, uh, we experienced the same as you have been going through now. And personally, just, you know, for me, it's very painful, uh, you know, because I consider Ukraine as my second homeland. Uh, for Georgians, all over Georgia, it's very painful too. And, you know, just the Georgians are very, I mean, they express, and every day they express a huge solidarity to Ukrainians. Uh, and I do hope that the whole world and civilized world will be very um, in close coordination with Ukraine. Because what Ukraine needs right now is uh, armament, um, weapon, uh, help, assistance, uh, rehabilitation of the people and renovation. And uh, I think that also just we have to consider as the, the powerful nations and the European Union and the United States also have to consider to really reimburse uh, the frozen Russian assets to Ukraine. So, I mean, overall, uh, it is uh, it is uh, not only for Ukraine. It's not the problem of Ukraine. It's not the problem of the region. It's a problem of Europe. It's a problem of the security of the European continent. It's also for the United States. And helping Ukraine is not the charity. Helping Ukraine is like the investing in the security because everybody... I don't know how the people just react and what is a, how they think and what are the, the expectations they have. Uh, but in Europe, um, but I think that the leaders really consider that the, the right things. But I have to underline that they, if uh, uh, that uh, if Ukraine uh, will be defeated uh, and uh, Putin won't stop in uh, Ukraine, I mean he will go and he will go to Europe. So I mean everybody must realize that. So thanks to Ukrainians and Ukrainian soldiers and Ukrainian people, we now are in peace in the region. But so we have to consider how to help and how to really just uh, gain the victory for all us, uh, for all of us, uh, very soon. Because we consider it's not only your fight; we consider it's only our fight too. Yeah, thank you for your words of support, and definitely. Um, you were born in Tbilisi, in the capital. Who were your parents and what was your childhood like there? Oh, well, my parents, uh, yeah, I was born in Tbilisi and uh, my parents and my family, they were just, they're just ordinary people. I mean, uh, uh, my, my father, uh, he passed away two years ago. My father was an engineer. My mother was a geophysics. Uh, engineer and they worked very hard in order to um, uh, to really just get the, get the education for me and my brother and uh, my childhood was like you know just very happy uh, when I was a child but early 90s you know, when I was a student and when I was in the high school 
I mean, the situation was very dark in Georgia because of that. We had we experienced three wars. So you know that the, there was a Russian in the Russia who inspired the war in um, Abkhazia and South Ossetia, mm-hmm. in all region, and also we uh, went through the civil war in Georgia. And early 90s uh, was quite dark for us uh, because, I mean, because of those wars, because of our occupied territories, because of a lot of IDPs, like 300,000 IDPs, and Georgia is a tiny country, and it's uh, those people who were just uh, kicked out of Abkhazia, they were just, uh, their fate was very difficult also. And uh, after the collapse of Soviet Union, because of the corruption, because of this, you know, very dark days, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, the early 90s was very, very, very difficult for our families, and they worked very hard, but overall, I'm happy that uh, they were part of my family, and uh, I'm happy that uh, they could, my parents uh, had been supporting me every stage of my life. You studied international relations and democracy and received your bachelor's degree from Tbilisi State University in 1999. Have you always dreamt of such an education and profession? Uh, yeah, I mean, I got the bachelor's degree and my diploma uh, was uh, honor in both in uh, Tbilisi State University. I, well, I mean, for, for in 90s, it was very interesting, though. I mean, because, uh, I mean, working as a diplomat, uh, working as an um, uh, expert and a specialist on international law, um, just I considered, and we considered this to be very interesting. And I think that it's very interesting also. But somehow, I mean, uh, I only worked as a diplomat for a couple of years. Because um, since 2004, I worked in the public sector. So, I mean, as an Mm-hmm. The criminal justice, uh, in the criminal justice reform. So, but the, the education I got, I mean, it's in my alma mater was uh, quite important for me, and that those years we were so happy. Uh, you were working as a Georgian embassy in Washington, D.C. from 2005 mm-hmm. to 2007. Which experience did you gain while living and working in America? Well, I mean, it was very interesting because the United States um, is and was uh, Georgia's number number one strategic partner. And uh, when you're working uh, with um, people, the decision makers in Washington, which is the capital of the free world, I can say, so it's very, very important. I mean, talking about... Uh, uh, the geopolitics, talking about the security issues, talking about the um, a training uh, and equip of Georgian, uh, Georgian uh, defense forces, uh, talking about the uh, assistance we in for the democracy and rule of law. I consider those years were very, very important for me. And also, I mean, uh, somehow Georgia was on the track to uh, fasten uh, the integration into the European Union and NATO. And I have to tell you that it was amazingly interesting and yeah it is interesting it is always hard when you're away from your home but it is interesting when you're talking to the people and when you're in the you know just the, uh, in the middle of the international relations and foreign policy policy priorities did you always want to become a politician or maybe you it was just a goal? <laughs> No, I never thought about becoming the politician. I never thought about becoming the public servant, uh, to say frankly, and to work in the criminal justice or police. Uh, but um, but I but I can say that uh, it was not detrimental for my biography. It was, in contrary, very very positive, and uh, I'm so proud that uh, I contributed to the reform policy in Ukraine and in Georgia as well. So I think that uh, it was uh, it was amazing adventure and endeavor that um, uh, brought my life and my experience. So no, I mean, uh, I never did. I never, I never thought about it, but I think that it is uh, amazingly interesting what the life is preparing for you. 
Uh, in May 2007, you were appointed rector of the newly created Police uh, Academy of Georgia. How difficult it was to enact new reforms? Well, uh, it was difficult uh, because, you know, um, uh, criminal justice is a sector where um, we're, uh, it's considered as a, as a, it is considered as a masculine sphere, right? I mean, the women in the police and the criminal justice, I mean, still are very, very few women are in the decision, as a decision makers. But it, I think it was uh, difficult, but it was also very interesting. Police reform, police education reform, because in Georgia, in 2000, after 2003, the revolution, we all had a lot of tasks. Uh, I had a class on how to reform country, which was very corrupted. So I think it was interesting. No, yeah, difficult, the long hours and the long days to work uh, 24 7. But I considered those years as very interesting as well as the years I had spent in Georgian and Ukrainian police. On July 2012, you were appointed and became Minister of Education. However, your term mm -hmm. ended in October when the United National Movement lost the parliamentary election and the new government replaced you with philosopher Ge uh, Georgi Margvilashvili. Mark um, Mark yeah. uh, how big was your disappointment from the fact that you could not implement your ideas and what did you say when you handed over your office to him? Well, I mean, it was uh, it was obvious that the peaceful transfer of power is like very democratic, and I was very proud, first of all, that uh, uh, it was a peaceful transfer of power in Georgia. It was the first time after revolutions and after a um, couple of you know just um, rigged elections, and I think that uh, uh, somehow it was disappointing when your political party, you represents. Um, you represent uh, losing the elections, but well, I mean, I think that there were a lot of mistakes that uh, were made by the by the previous government, and of course, I mean, the people always have the choice. I mean, this is the rule of the democracy. Uh, Margola Shuli was appointed to the Minister of Education. Later, he became the president of Georgia, and I can say that uh, yeah, he's a very interesting character also. But I think that uh, I never yeah. It was hard, but I never read it because I think that after that I had a lot of opportunities to really express myself and really work very hard for Georgia and Ukraine both. I also work in Moldova and I think that it's, it's amazing what uh, I went through these countries uh, regarding the reforms. What relationship do you have with him? So. We are good, uh, not friends, but I know him very well, and we have a very good, uh, you know, introduction back in 2012, and now just we always just can have a um, cup of coffee <laughs> and chat and have a good conversation. Okay. Uh, Chief of Ukrainian Police, how big was your surprise when you were offered this high position, and who offered it to you, and what was your reaction? Well, I was surprised, uh, but uh, before that I worked, you know, that I worked in the uh, criminal justice project for DOJ project uh, in Ukraine, Kiev. So I, before that I used to work with Ukrainian police, a couple of Georgians worked in the ministry. So um, I think uh, it was president of Ukraine, Poroshenko, who offered me the job and I met him. and. Uh, I can't say that I was like very scared, but it was a surprise and I was like, I didn't know, uh, you know, I mean, I was born in Georgia, I was raised in Georgia, and I didn't know the real realities of, uh, the true realities of Ukraine. And Ukraine is huge and a lot of people and, you know, it's one task to work in Georgia, which is like three and a half million and very tiny. And there's another task, it's like um, the... Uh, um, goal which uh, Ukraine had, right? Because I mean, after Maidan, uh, we had to create a national force, national police, which uh, would be the institute of, for the people of Ukraine and not for, um, not for only the government. So I was surprised, uh, but so I think that it was very probably one of uh, one of the most amazing experience I have ever had.
and I'm very proud that the uh, the couple of uh, police officers uh, I know and I point to the, the police officers. I mean, they are uh, they work very hard and uh, they they are defending Ukraine right now. Uh, what is the difference between working in Georgia, Ukraine, and you also have mentioned that you work in Moldova, if I'm not mistaken? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I think that uh, probably uh, scales and the landscape and the people and but you know I mean uh, the big difference there is no big difference. I mean, if you work hard and if you make decisions that you have to do, you have to make, and if you're uh, very straightforward and if you just uh, if you're not corrupted, of course, I mean, I think that you will always do the right things. Uh, so um, I think that we all came from the Soviet uh, past, and what we all wanted is like to have this European future. And I think that the Europe is democracy and rule of law, first of all. So I mean, what mm, you have to do in this regard is like uh, uh, to strengthen the rule of law, because if there is no free judiciary, no police, uh, which is not a, only a base to, base to Ukrainian people or Georgian people, so I mean, then nothing will happen. So I think that uh, despite the fact that, uh, yeah, of course, there are some differences, uh, I think that there are also a lot of similarities. What future do you want for Ukraine and for Georgia? Uh, excuse, excuse me, say again. again. What, yeah. what future would you like Georgia uh, and Ukraine to have? Uh, future. Uh, actually, I think that the future in the European Union uh, and NATO, uh, this is one. And I think that this is a mission. Uh, and this is why Ukrainians are fighting so hard right now and why they're dying for their future, for your future and for the future of uh, our kids. Uh, and uh, for sure, Ukraine deserves the best, and Ukrainian people and Georgian people, they deserve the best uh, to be the part of the European Union, to be the part of NATO, to be protected, uh, to uh, have the freedom of choice, and to be in the democracy, and to, have the, to get the best education, and to um, have the security. And of course, I mean, you know, when I think about it, and I think that, that there are so many Ukrainian kids and the children under the bombs and the shelling of Russian shaky drones and uh, and rockets and uh, it makes my heart bleeding because I mean this is very unfair. So I want peace for you. I want uh, for my country, for both Ukraine and Georgia. I want the younger generation not to really understand what is um, what uh, this terrorist country can bring to what kind of damage they can, I mean, Russia can bring. And I think that the freedom and the be the free countries in the European Union and NATO, I think that this is a future I want for both countries. Yeah, so we hope it will happen like this, as you said. Of course, of course, of course, it will happen for sure. All right, do you like any musicians or singers from Ukraine? Oh, um, yes, my favorite, one of my favorite group is uh, Akian and Z, uh, oh. which, is, uh, which uh, was my favorite group even when I was very young. I always uh, used to listen to them, and personally I know Mr. Vakarchuk also, he's amazing. And uh, I think that uh, probably, I mean, Akian and Z is one of the best rock group ever. I mean, I think this is, uh, this is very... Mm, that's very interesting that uh, you know I had this possibility to listen to to, to to them you know in Ukraine. Cool. Do you? Ha- what is your favorite song from Okeana? Uh, um, uh, this is like a couple of them. Uh, I have whole albums like mm-hmm. um, uh, I probably I might not remember the names uh, correctly, but I think that. Uh, this boy is one of my favorites. Um, uh, also, Call of No is one of my uh, favorite too. If I'm not mistaken, this is the name. Uh, and a couple of others. I mean, I have a lot of a lot of uh, songs which I really like. Like, I can't. All right. So actually, 
in my interviews, I always sing at the end. And I also ah. love Okeanesi. But I prepared other song. But you said that you like Besboyu. So I will try to sing it. So I, I I didn't rehearse it, but I always like listen to it. So I will try to sing it for you. Okay. One second. <clears throat> Що ж це я, що ж це я не зумів зупинитися вчасно? Все ясно, зі мною тепер і назавжди пізно не йди, не йди від мене. Пала-парабірумбай, я налию собі, я налию тобі вина. А хочеш із меном, хто ти я, ти взяла моє життя і навідала, хто ти я, ти випила мою кров і п'яною впала, твої очі кличуть, хочуть мене, ведуть за собою, хто ти я і ким мене була ти. Я не здамся без бою. Я не здамся без бою. That was amazing. You sing very well, by the way. <laughs> Thank you very much. And actually, I also love this song, uh, this song because Я не здамся без бою. So I won't uh, give up. Well, uh, I won't without give the up. Fight. Yeah, yeah, without the fight. So it is also a very sim symbolic song. So uh, absolutely, and I, I, uh, yeah, I mean, they are very. Bakarchuk is amazing with talented, and they are very talented. So, and you're very talented too. Congratulations! <laughs> thank you very much, and thank you for talking with me today. Thank you for this great. Thank interview. you for inviting with me, inviting me, and I appreciate. Uh, our conversation and I want to wish you all the best. Thank you very much. And I also wish you all the best in your career and also, as you said earlier, a better future for Georgia and Ukraine. And yeah, and I think this war will end soon and we will think about developing our countries in democratic way and also ways working with each other so and living in peace. So this is the main thing. Amazing. Heroim Slava. And thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.